Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So today's case that we are covering happened in 2022. So literally not that long ago. And at the time, a woman named Abigail White, who was 24 years old, she had a boyfriend called Brad. They had three children together and she was an OnlyFans model. And Abby did pretty well on OnlyFans. Her name was Fake Barbie. That was her thing. And she sometimes made 50,000 pounds a year. However, there was a big issue when it came to Abby and that was her anger. Oh boy, does she have anger problems. She is one of those people that if you even look at them the wrong way, they will fly off the handle. And this resulted in her treating her boyfriend, Brad, appallingly. And their relationship is so toxic. It's so messy. There was violence and cheating on both sides. And of course, there's three children involved as well, which just makes it even worse. Social services had to get involved. And Abby was the kind of person that had to get her own way. And when she didn't, there would be consequences. I have to beat the living daylights out of him. He only tells me the truth when he thinks I'm gonna kill him. Like when I get a knife out, when I stab him. And it all ended in the most horrific circumstances in March of 2022. So I'm not gonna say anything more than that. So let's just jump in. So I just wanted to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor and that is Love and Pies. If you haven't heard of Love and Pies, it is just the coziest game ever. You play as single mom, Amelia Green, who has just inherited her mom's cafe that burnt down. But also Amelia's mom has gone missing. There's this big mystery to solve. There is juicy secrets. There is relationships a will they won't they relationship the game is truly packed full of drama and you just follow along the storyline and it's like your own netflix drama and i know so many of you already play love and pies and you're obsessed with it and can't get enough but if you don't play love and pies you are truly missing out and i have a special announcement for you all which is that love and pies have just launched a special event the gothic pass and in this event, you get to dive into the tale of Edwina's historical manor, which has tragically been set for demolition. But Edwina desperately wants to save it and you have to help her. During the pass, you get to collect Gothic style decorations. And then you go on a spooky adventure with Edwina and May. And then you get to restore and revive this Gothic manor, which is stunning, by the way. And the storyline that runs throughout Love and Pies is perfect for all of us true crime fans and especially with this gothic pass if you like the spooky and the mysterious now is the time to play love and pies but i do have one more special announcement and love and pies wanted to do something exclusive and special for my audience only so all of you watching right now this is exclusive which is that everyone who downloads love and pies within one week using my link and also plays today three you will receive an amazing free gift via your in-game inbox one week later which consists of 200 energy and 50 gems. And you will quickly find out how important those gems are in the game. So go and download Love and Pies right now using my link and get your free gift. And the Gothic Pass event is only running for the next three weeks. So make sure that you go and play Love and Pies right now. Make the most of it. Collect all the decorations. I promise you, you will not regret it. So thank you again to Love and Pies for sponsoring today's video. But thank you to every single one of you watching right now because truly without all of you guys I wouldn't get opportunities like this and now let's jump into today's case. Abigail White also known as Abby was born in 1998 an exact date of birth is not known and she grew up in the city of Bristol in the UK where she lived with her parents and growing up Abby did not have it easy and oh my god that is an understatement. From the age of four Abby witnessed her dad being very physically and verbally abusive to her mom. He would carry out horrific, violent assaults on her mom in front of her. She was exposed to things that no one should be exposed to. Now, eventually her parents did get a divorce, but things did not get any better. In fact, they actually just got worse because her mom met a new man, got married. They had another child together. But then as soon as the new baby was born, Abby's stepdad started to physically assault her and sexually abuse abuse her. And I don't know any more details than that, but oh my God, that is absolutely horrific. Now, thankfully, social services did find out about this abuse and Abby was placed in foster care. However, things still do not get better. Even though she's now out of her mom's custody, she's out of that household. Abby's childhood just now continues to spiral downwards. She started acting out in school. This is possibly where her anger issues developed. She started getting fights with other children at school. She was massively disruptive 
never concentrated on her work, never wanted to try. And of course, in children, these are all massive red flags that something is not right in the house. And because of her actions in school, this led her to be excluded from school. And then she went to what is called a pupil referral unit, which is basically just a special school that children go to that have behavioral problems and the school tries to address the issue and, you know, put them back on the right path. And already at such a young age, Abby was described as extremely intense and volatile, angry, but that she also had a deep fear of rejection and abandonment. And that is what caused her to lash out. And again, coming from her background, what she witnessed as a child, that's very understandable that she has that fear of abandonment, especially because she has been taken out of her home and placed in foster care. By the time Abby reaches her teenage years, she does leave foster care and she's placed in the custody of her gran. However, Abby's behavior was still completely out of control and her gran couldn't handle her. So her gran sent Abby away, which does not help with her abandonment issues, does it? And then after living with her gran, Abby ended up living with her biological dad again. And this is the dad that physically abused her mom in front of her. So ooh, he's not exactly the best person for her to be living with. And it turns out that Abby's dad now is also an alcoholic. Again, not the best environment for Abby as a teenager because it's literally just Abby and her dad. And Abby, as a young teenager, she's possibly no more than 13 years old now. She's now living with an abusive dad and an alcoholic dad. She's probably taking on a lot of responsibility. She's probably having to be an adult in that house. And at only 13 years old, Abby also turns to alcohol herself, which just breaks my heart. It really does. I hate hearing that. Children should not have to be turning to substances to cope with life. She began drinking on a regular basis just to get through the day. And she's only 13. She was also prescribed antidepressants at 13. She was in and out of therapy trying to deal with all of the emotional trauma and stress that she had. And then a couple of years later, Abby also turned to cocaine. So now she's also taking cocaine on a pretty regular basis, as well as drinking an obscene amount of alcohol most days. And Abby herself has said that when she took cocaine, it made her feel more confident. It made her feel happy in herself. Again, that just truly, truly breaks my heart. And it was also around this time that Abby did try and take her own life twice. So to say that Abby had a difficult childhood and teenage years is an understatement. And then at the age of 15, Abby's romantic life started to develop. She got her first like proper official boyfriend. She was in this relationship for about seven months and there's nothing really to note about this relationship. I think it was just with another like 15 year old boy. Abby said that she was really happy in this relationship. She actually felt stability for the first time in her life in this relationship. She actually felt happy. She felt love. But then clearly that relationship ended after to seven months. And this is when things took a turn for the worse because Abby is now 16 years old and she enters into a relationship with a 29 year old man. No, no, no. That is just wrong on so many levels. That 29 year old man knows exactly what he is doing and we don't know his name. We don't know any more details about the relationship, but I can guarantee you he was taking advantage of her. And we also don't know if the relationship was sexual or not, but I think we can all put two and two together here. And it was also around this time when Abby was 16 that she was taken out of the care of her dad because he could not look after her at all because he was an alcoholic. He was dealing with his own things. So she went back into the foster care system. She did end up spending some time with a couple of different families. She also spent time in a youth hostel and she literally is just bouncing around from one place to another. And that is not going to help her abandonment issues. And then when Abby was finally 18 years old, we don't actually know any more about that relationship with the 29 year old. So clearly they have broken up in those two years. So Abby is now 18 years old and she finally leaves the care system for the final time because she's now an adult and she is given housing by the council and Abby finally has a home of her own. So that was Abby's upbringing, full of trauma, chaos, 
drugs and alcohol, predatory relationships. It left Abby dealing with all kinds of emotional trauma. And it was at this point when Abby was 18 year old that she would enter into a relationship with someone that is very significant to today's case. And that is Bradley Lewis. Now Bradley at this point is 16 years old and Abby is 18. So there is two years difference there. Wow, I actually don't know how many years difference they are because I don't know their birthday. So there might only be just over a year between them. I, I don't know. But they'd kind of grown up together. I think they went to the same high school. So that is how they knew each other. So they had known each other for a very long time. And Brad was described as like a great person, someone that was just always friendly, willing to help people. He loved football. That was like his number one passion in life. And when Brad and Abby finally got into an official relationship with one another, it was a whirlwind. It was very intense. They would spend every minute that they could together. And from the get-go, they were head over heels in love with one another. And without wasting any time at all, they went on to have three children together. I don't know the exact ages of both Abby and Brad when they had the children. However, I do know by the time Abby turns 23 years old, she's already had the third child. So she already has three children at 23 years old and Brad is only 21 and they've already got three children. And it was around this time when Abby was a stay-at-home mom raising the three children that she needed to bring in some more money. Brad was the only one working. He was a floor layer. Abby had never had a job before. So they only had one wage coming into the household and raising three children that's expensive. So Abby wanted to make a little bit of money, make things a little bit easier. And this is when Abby decided to create an OnlyFans account. She realized that it was a job that she could do from home. She could raise her children whilst doing it. It gave her the freedom to be able to fit her children in around her work. So she created a profile. She gave herself the name as Fake Barbie. And Abby started sharing explicit content, so photos and videos with her subscribers. And it wasn't long before Abby was raking in the money. She was bringing in thousands of pounds a month. In her first year on OnlyFans, she made 50 thousand pounds. So Abby was raking it in. She was making a lot of money. She was living the high life. She must have been over the moon with the amount of money that she was making. However, that money didn't last long. Abby quickly found that her popularity on the app declined quite quickly and she was also posting less on the app as well. So the amount of money that she was making was just going down and down and down. However, eventually things kind of leveled out and she was bringing in approximately a thousand pounds a month which would have obviously worked out around £12,000 a year, which was enough. It was enough as well as Brad's income. It was enough to raise the children, sustain their lifestyle, their home. And I think Abby was content with that. She couldn't grow her platform any bigger, but it was still bringing in money. So that is what Abby was doing. However, we also need to talk about something very significant to today's case. And that is Abby's anger issues. If anything, her anger has gotten worse the older she's gotten. Abby was somebody that struggled on a daily basis to keep her anger under control. She needed help, definitely 100%. She would fly off the handle for the smallest thing. She just always seemed to be angry at either someone or something. There was always something wrong. There was always a problem. And this soon led to a very toxic relationship with Brad. For starters, they always seemed to be arguing. They were the kind of couple where they may have like one or two days where they were okay, but 90% of their relationship was arguing. It is said that Abby was extremely needy in the relationship and her fear of abandonment was still very much a thing. She was constantly demanding Brad's attention. She constantly demanded that Brad prove his love to her. For example, she would say to Brad, you should buy me more gifts to show me that you love me. She would make Brad go out and buy her presents. She would constantly want praise from him, nice words. She would constantly, all the time, need Brad to say that he loved her to the point where it was not healthy. Also, whenever she texts Brad, she wanted a reply 
instantly. And if she told Brad to do something, he had to do it. He had to comply with everything that she said. Otherwise, she would get angry. And if Brad didn't comply, if Brad angered her in some sort of way, she was incredibly volatile and violent. She would lash out at Brad and she would physically attack him. She would punch him, kick him, slap him. However, it wasn't just Abby's anger issues that made the relationship toxic. Oh no, because there was infidelity left, right and centre. Because Abby and Brad would constantly cheat on one another. And this was not an open relationship. This was not some sort of like agreement that they could have other sexual partners. No, 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 no. They were supposed to be faithful, but neither of them were. The cheating was coming from both sides. And both of them were not happy that the other one was cheating, but then they were still cheating themselves. Abby would constantly accuse Brad of cheating on her. She would get really angry with him if he never texts back straight away. She would say, where have you been? Always accusing him of being with another woman, which sometimes he was. But then at the same time, Abby was doing the exact same thing to Brad. And then Brad would get really angry with Abby, accuse her of cheating, say, where have you been? Have you been sleeping with other men? Which again, Abby sometimes did. And it was just like that. And I'm just like, wow, just, just break up people. It's not that hard. But they would also engage in sexual activity with other people together. For example, there was a Halloween party and Brad invited a couple back with them to have a foursome. There was another time when Abby and Brad were in a nightclub and they met twin sisters. Brad invited the twins back to their home, propositioned them for a foursome. The twins said, no, 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 that's not why we're here. But then one of the twins cornered Brad in his own home and said, I don't want a foursome, but I want to have sex with you. So Brad agreed. Brad had sex with one of the twins in the house, but they were supposed to be having a foursome, but they didn't. And Brad has, it's just messy. The boundaries are definitely blurry in this relationship. And as we know, both Brad and Abby are cheating on each other constantly. There was one time when Abby was pregnant with one of the children that Brad cheated on her with another woman and got that woman pregnant as well. And I'm just like, oh my God, my head is hurting. So Brad has two women at the same time pregnant. Abby was not happy about this and she held on to this anger for a very long time. And then it was after Brad having a child with another woman where their relationship got even more toxic and volatile. So Brad now has four children, three with Abby and one child with someone else. And there was a lot of tension between everyone, like all of the families involved. First of all, Abby didn't get on with Brad's mom because Brad's mom didn't approve of their relationship because she could just see how toxic it was. She didn't want her son to be with someone like Abby. Abby also accused Brad of sending sexual messages to her sister. And I don't know if this is true, but then because Abby told her parents that Brad was sending sexual messages to their other daughter, to Abby's sister, that meant that Abby's parents also didn't like Brad. Abby was also becoming even more spiteful and just violent towards Brad. It seemed like she was more violent more often with Brad. She would physically lash out at him, abuse him, punch him, kick him, slap him. Abby was someone that could go from zero to 100 instantly. And then one time Abby lashed out and she was so angry that she actually stabbed Brad in the leg. Yeah, that is how angry and volatile and scary Abby is. Now, thankfully, Brad was okay, but it did leave a huge scar on his leg. And this just shows you how volatile Abby can be. But Abby wasn't just scary, volatile, and violent towards people that she knew. Abby was also incredibly volatile with strangers. She was constantly getting into arguments and fights with people just out in public. She would just be one of those people that if you saw them in like the supermarket, you can just tell. You can just tell that you need to give them a wide berth and just don't even look at them. And most of the time, Abby was getting into other fights and arguments with women. There was another time when Abby was in a nightclub in Bristol and she got into an argument with a random woman because Abby believed that this woman had made a rude comment about her, which I'm pretty sure the woman never did. But Abby, the way her mind works, she's angry at everyone. So you only have to look at her in the wrong way. And she would take that as an insult. So they had an argument out in the nightclub and then Abby followed this woman into the toilets and Abby launched a vicious attack on this woman 
in the nightclub toilets. This woman was at the sink, she was looking in the mirror and Abby appeared behind her. Abby then grabbed this woman by the arm and punched her in the face. She also grabbed the woman by her hair, pulling out her hair extensions. She then literally scratched her face, scratched her eye. She left multiple scratch marks down her face. And this poor woman was terrified. Thankfully, the security at the nightclub was called and Abby was pulled off of the woman. And Abby actually was arrested for this attack on this woman and she landed herself in court. And she was sentenced to 12 months community service. And I'm just like, what the actual hell? Abby has attacked this random woman in this nightclub unprovoked, in public, in front of people, and she just doesn't care. And that really does make me think, wow, what is she doing to Brad in private if she's literally willing to do stuff like that in public? And then because of this, because she was now in trouble with the law, social services got wind of it because she has three children and social services were concerned about the welfare of these three children. And social services, they made visits to the home. They looked over everything, which included Abby and Brad's relationship. And social services could see that the relationship was incredibly toxic, volatile, and abusive towards Brad. And social services was like, no, 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 no. This is not the right environment for children. And social services ordered the couple to not live together. They deemed it too dangerous for the children, for Abby and Brad to live together, to raise the children together. So Brad moved out of the home, went to live with his mom, and Abby was left in the house with the three children. Now I have a bone to pick here, I do. Because I'm sorry, I know both of them are toxic. However, Abby is the violent one. Abby is the abusive one. Abby is the one abusing Brad. She's just stabbed him in the leg. Why are social services leaving the children in Abby's care? She she should be the one moving in with her mom or somebody else, leaving the children with Brad. But did the separation help? No, if anything, it actually just made matters worse because now Abby's controlling behavior, it got worse. And I assume it got worse because Brad is no longer living in the home. Abby can't watch his every move check his phone. And at this point as well, now that Brad has gotten himself out of the relationship, out of that household, Brad wants to split up. And he told Abby this. But every time he told Abby that he wanted to split up, she started to blackmail him. Abby would threaten to kill herself if Brad broke up with her. Abby would also threaten to kill Brad if he ever broke up with her. I'm not sure if she ever threatened the children, but to be honest, I wouldn't put it past her. Abby also threatened to kill Brad's mom, the other women that Brad had cheated on her with, the woman that Brad had had another child with. Abby threatened to kill them all if Brad ever broke up with her. But Abby also liked to play the victim. She liked to blame all of this on Brad. Basically like, Brad, I will kill your mom if you break up with me, but it's your fault. You're doing this to me. So Abby would send Brad multiple messages saying things like, you're killing me. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself on your mom's doorstep. I swear to God, I'll stab you. And these kinds of messages were constant. Abby also started to Google very concerning things. She started to Google how to make a noose. She also searched for, can you die from a broken heart? And it is also said that around this time, Abby also tried to take her own life multiple times. And I'm not sure if they were genuine attempts on her life or just as a manipulation tactic, because obviously she has used that. She has said that she will kill herself if Brad breaks up with her, so I, I'm not sure. It was also around this time when Abby set up a TikTok account that she made purely for the purpose to humiliate Brad. She was just straight up bullying Brad on TikTok. And unbelievably, in these TikTok videos, Abby would brag about violence, violence towards Brad, openly shouting to the world what she has already done to Brad and what she wants to do to him. She would say that Brad was a weak man, that he was completely under her control. And I'm just like, wow, she's literally shouting it from the rooftops, what she wants to do. And Brad really hated Abby. I think it had turned into hate. He hated how much she belittled him, controlled him, abused him. And this is all Brad would talk about to his friends. He would talk about how he was scared of Abby, how he wanted to break up with her, but he was scared about what she could do. However, Brad was also incredibly concerned that if he did leave Abby, that she was going to take her own life. And because of this, especially because they have children together, Brad felt completely trapped. He was in an incredibly controlling and abusive abusive relationship that he felt like he couldn't get out of. He was genuinely scared for himself. He was scared for his children. He was also scared for Abby. And especially given Abby's history, 
It's quite clear that she is capable of anything. So Brad decided that the best decision, the safest decision, was to stay with Abby. And this would lead to devastating consequences. And now we get to March of 2022. And this is when the tragic events of today's case begin to unfold. And there seems to have been one big trigger for all of this. And that is that Abby fell pregnant for the fourth time, which is not a good idea. They already have three children. It's an incredibly toxic, hostile, chaotic environment. Social services have already ordered the couple to separate. Like they're not allowed to live together for the safety of the children. However, that wasn't the only problem because Brad believed that the father of the child was somebody else, not him, which it may well have been. Abby was always cheating as well. However, Abby was adamant that the child was Brad's. Abby messaged Brad saying, quote, I'm pregnant by you and you know it. And then on the 17th of March, Abby started researching a lot of things related to miscarriages alongside researching topics on stabbing, which is obviously very concerning. And then on the 18th of March, Abby decided to go to a clinic to get the pregnancy terminated. And I'm not sure if it was a decision between Abby and Brad. I don't know if it was mutual. I don't know if Abby just made that decision herself. But what we do know is that Brad was there for Abby. Regardless of whether he thought that that child was his or not, he still cared for Abby. As soon as he found out about the abortion, he was straight away there, comforting her, offering her whatever she needed. And Brad stayed with her the night to comfort her. However, the next morning they got into a huge argument. Abby accused Brad of cheating on her with with two separate women. And Abby was so angry, like more angry than she had ever been in her life. She went into the kitchen, she got a knife again and stabbed Brad in the arm. So this is now the second time that she has stabbed Brad. So Brad went to the hospital. Thankfully, he was okay again. And he just said that it was an accident, like at home, like it was just like a little incident at home. He never blamed it on Abby because he didn't want Abby to get in trouble. However, in the days following the stabbing, things just continue to get worse and worse. Abby just couldn't seem to get the idea of stabbing Brad out of her head. And Abby started to send a string of very concerning messages to a friend. She was saying to her friend in these messages that everything was just getting on top of her. She was struggling to cope. She was struggling to cope with Brad. She even said, quote, he's going to end up making me dead or in jail. She also said in these messages that she wanted to kill Brad. Now, obviously that could just be like a figure of speech, but in Abby's case, I don't think it is. She also said that she wanted to kill the mother of Brad's other child. And she said that the only reason why she wasn't going to kill Brad or anybody else is that she would end up in prison and she didn't want to do that to her kids. Well, it's a pity that she didn't continue on thinking like that. But Abby continues to send multiple threatening messages to Brad. She says to Brad that he doesn't love her anymore, that he doesn't make her happy. And she also wants to, quote, throw a brick at his mom's head. Brad just responds to these messages that Abby is absolutely vile and she treats him like crap and that he's done with her, like he's through, they're over. However, following this, Abby makes a very chilling voice note. And she makes this voice note just days before the chilling, horrific events of today's case. The voice note says things like, I have no limit when I'm angry. I fully believe I'm capable of killing him if he hurts me again. I'm going to end up in prison. I have no limit when I get angry. And like, obviously he said that I need help with that. People are generally saying to me, one of you are going to end up dead. And I fully believe that I'm quite capable of killing him if he hurts me again, or I'm going to end up being in prison. She also says that she doesn't believe a word that comes out of that boy's mouth and that she has to beat the living daylight out of him to get the truth. But I don't believe a word that comes out of that boy's mouth. I have to beat the living daylights out of him for him to tell me the truth and he still don't tell me the truth. She also says that Brad only ever tells her the truth when she threatens to kill him or she threatens to stab him with a knife. He only tells me the truth when he thinks I'm going to kill him. Like when I get a knife out, like when I 
stab him. Like, oh, I just, I just don't get this kid. And now we get to Friday, the 25th of March, 2022. Brad messages Abby saying that he wants to meet up with her in a park to have a talk. So Abby agrees to meet him, but she brings a friend along, which is very, very awkward. So they meet up in the park, the three of them, Brad, Abby, and then Abby's friend. They all sit on a park bench and Brad basically just tells Abby that it's over for good this time. It is over. And it's incredibly awkward, this conversation, because the three of them are on this bench. So there's definitely a long, awkward silence. However, moments later, Abby just responds, okay, no hard feelings, which I can probably imagine that Brad was very surprised at that response because Abby is a very angry person. I assume he was probably expecting her to blow up in his face, which is probably why he wanted to meet in a public place. However, that doesn't stop Abby, does it? However, then Abby asks Brad if he wants to meet her at the pub later. And I don't know why Abby has said this. Is she saying this as like, oh, let's just meet as friends. Like we still have three children together. We still need to raise them. So we still need to be civil with one another but Brad agrees to meet her at this pub so they all go their separate ways and then a few hours later Abby arrives at the pub at 5 p.m which is the time that they agree to meet so Brad has not arrived yet no he's late it's a Friday night so the pub is pretty busy and Abby has her three children with her Abby meets up with two of their friends, Louise and Ryan, who are a couple that Brad and Abby go on like double dates with quite often. And then it gets to half five. Brad is now half an hour late and Abby is angry. And that is an understatement. Abby was texting Brad saying things like, where are you? Why are you always late? Why do you not care about me? She also accuses Brad of sleeping with other women in this time. And that is why he's late. And Abby is getting more and more angry she is knocking back the drinks. At this point, she has had a whole bottle of wine to herself, two rum and cokes, a Jaeger bomb. So I honestly don't even know how she's even still standing. But then she goes into the toilets and takes a load of cocaine. And I just want to remind you all that she is supposed to be looking after her three children at this point. The three children are there. And then 7pm rolls around and Brad finally arrives at the pub two hours after they agreed he should get there. So when Brad arrives, as we can all imagine, Abby went crazy, demanding to know where he's been, what he's doing. She again accuses him of cheating in those two hours, but Brad, he just ignored her. I mean, they're not even supposed to be together at this point. And Brad turns to their friend Ryan and says, can you come to the toilets with me? So Brad and Ryan, they go to the toilets and Brad just completely breaks down crying. He is literally broken. He is crying to Ryan saying, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm genuinely so scared for my life. I'm scared for her life. He came clean about all of the abuse and Ryan did his best to calm his friend down, reassure him. So Brad, he composed himself. He got himself together. Brad and Ryan both left the toilets and Abby was there waiting for him on the other side of the door. She again starts making a scene, shouting at Brad, saying, what were you doing in there? What were you talking about? Were you talking about me? She again accuses Brad of sleeping with women, and that is why he was late. She then threw a drink over Brad, slapped him, and started punching him repeatedly. In front of a pub, full of people. Ryan tried to break up the altercation that was going on. He said, stop bullying Brad, stop abusing him. He also said to Brad that if he didn't want to go home with Abby, he was welcome to stay at his home. And Abby just completely lost it even more that Ryan was interfering in their relationship. And this is when Abby walked up to Ryan, stared in his eyes and spat in his face. Yeah, she spat on him. It's just, oh, it's just disgusting. So then this is when Ryan was like, right, I've had enough. Like, I'm out of here. So Ryan and Louise leave the pub. So now in the pub is just Brad, Abby, and the three children. Yeah, I need to remind you all of that. The three children have just witnessed this altercation between their mom and dad, and then also their mom and Ryan. So Brad goes up to the bar and he orders himself three pints. And then they sat down. However, Abby was in a foul mood. She was just causing trouble now. She was actually getting into 
into arguments with other people in the pub. You know what she's like. So Abby said that she wanted to leave, like she'd had enough, she wanted to go home. But Brad said, no, I've just bought these drinks and I'm going to drink them. I'm not wasting my money. So then Abby got her arm and swept all of the pints off of the table. All of the pints, the glass, everything smashed on the floor. And then she was just smiling at Brad, this like really creepy, disturbing, mocking smile. And she said, well, you don't have any drinks now. Brad was visibly angry and upset about this. So a woman in her thirties, another person in the pub, not known to either Abby or Brad, approached the couple and said, is everything okay over here? To which Abby turned to this woman and said, who the f are you? To which the stranger, her partner jumped in and said, don't talk to my partner like that. So what did Abby do in response? She threw a drink in the face of that man. She slapped him and then spat in his face to a stranger, a random person who literally, he didn't even say anything. Like he just said, stop speaking to my partner like that. The woman just said, is everything okay? And this is how Abby has responded. And the man is obviously not happy about this. So he actually shoves Abby away from him and Abby falls on the floor all dramatic she actually starts crying which are probably crocodile tears Brad then intervened and said to the man don't hit Abby it is all very very messy and then Abby has the audacity to call 999 and report that man that shoved her to the police when she was the one that started the altercation to begin with. However, whilst Abby is on the phone to 999, she actually decides to put the phone down when they ask for her details because she doesn't want to give her name over. Although she made sure to give a short description of what the man looked like and said to the operator on the phone, I hope you find him and arrest him for what he's done to me. And then when she put the phone down, she started going crazy at Brad and started blaming him for causing the altercation, for allowing another man to shove her when she slapped him and spat in his face. It's like, oh my God. So at 7.50 p.m., Brad and Abby and the three children leave the pub less than an hour after Brad even got there. This is when Brad sees another friend in the car park and asks them if they can give Brad, Abby and the three children a lift home, which the friend agrees to do. And it is an incredibly awkward car ride. Brad actually says to his friend, I'm dead when I get home. But Brad didn't expand any further than that. And given what is about to happen, that is very, very chilling. So just before 8 p.m., Brad, Abby, and the three children, they arrive home. And as soon as they enter the house, you can probably imagine Abby completely lost it. Upon entering the hallway, Abby immediately launched a verbal attack on Brad, saying that he was worthless, that he was no good. He shouldn't have allowed that man to attack her in the pub, that he should have defended her honor. She also shouted, at her three-year-old son to go upstairs and get ready for bed. And again, I feel like I just need to remind you all of this. The three children are there. I don't know where the other two are, but my heart just breaks for those children witnessing this. Brad kept saying to Abby, like, calm down. She was overreacting. And this is when Abby started to shove Brad and things did get a little bit physical. Abby stormed off to the kitchen. Now, whether this was to calm down or maybe grab something, Maybe she was planning to do something. We just do not know. Abby claims that it was impulse. It wasn't premeditated. However, what we do know is that Abby returned from that kitchen holding a knife. She then walks back over to Brad and without hesitation, Abby plunges the knife into Brad's chest in between his ribs. Brad actually staggered forward. He had shock written all over his face and he looked down and there was a pool of blood gathering on his clothes. Abby at this point started to panic because, I mean, she stabbed Brad before, but this is a little bit more serious than the arm or the leg. She stabbed him in the chest. That is intentional. You intend to kill someone. At least you intend to cause serious harm if you are stabbing someone in the chest. But Abby starts to panic. She helps Brad take his top off and they can see the large wound on his chest. And at this point, Abby also turns and sees her three-year-old son. Unnoticed, the three-year-old son has started to make their way down the stairs and has witnessed this attack. It just breaks my heart. The three-year-old watching their mom stab their dad. Brad stumbles into the kitchen and falls on the floor. He's just lying on the floor in front of the washing machine, just bleeding out. Abby really does go into full-on panic mode now because I can imagine in her mind, she's already stabbed Brad twice. Don't forget that, in the arm and the leg, and she's gotten away with both. So I think Abby went into that kitchen, got the knife and stabbed Brad 
thinking that it wouldn't be a big deal. She's already stabbed him twice. He's lived and she's gotten away with it. But she's not going to get away with this. She's stabbed him in the chest and there's blood everywhere. And Abby tries to clean up the crime scene. She frantically starts to clean up the blood that is around Brad. She got the mop out. She started scrubbing the floors. She even put Brad's clothes in the washing machine. And I'm like, wow, you really think that that is going to help? All the while, Brad is just there on the floor, literally bleeding to death. God knows where the children are at this point. What could they possibly be seeing? And then this is when Abby finally, apparently calls for an ambulance. And I want to stress that apparently, because according to Abby, she couldn't get through. She had trouble with her phone service and she couldn't get through to 999. Suspicious if you ask me. So because Abby apparently couldn't get through to emergency services, Abby started screaming out for help and her neighbour, a woman called Laura, heard this and thankfully she dialed 999 and said that she needed police and she needed immediate assistance for her neighbour. So then this is when the neighbour, Laura, went over to the home, which was incredibly brave of her because she didn't have a clue what she was walking into. But anyway, Laura knocks on the door. Abby opens the door. She's in a little pink dress, you know, she's all dolled up from the pub. She doesn't have a speck of blood on her, which makes me think, did she change? But anyway, she's in this pink dress. She lets Laura in. She actually leads Laura to the kitchen to show her Brad on the floor. And then this is where Abby starts to pull out her best acting skills because now, according to Laura, Abby is really concerned about Brad. She doesn't leave Brad's side. She's constantly worried about him, saying to Brad, we love you, Brad. We love you. Stay with us. And I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. I really just don't buy that at all. Abby's son, three-year-old son, is also there looking completely traumatized. As soon as Laura actually saw Brad on the floor, she immediately rushes over to Brad, puts pressure on his wound, starts CPR. She also phones 999 again for an ambulance. And the operator is talking her through these procedures, trying to keep Brad alive. Because Brad was still alive. There was a pulse. It was faint, but there was still hope. And again, Abby is still acting all concerned. We love you, Brad. We love you. And Abby also said to Laura that Brad stabbed himself. That is the story that she was going with. Brad did this to himself. Abby said that the two of them had been arguing and Brad picked up the knife and stabbed himself through his own chest. Did she truly think that anyone was going to believe this? But this is coming from the person that tried to scrub blood off of a floor with a mop and put blooded clothes into a washing machine thinking that that would help. Eventually, emergency services arrived and Brad was rushed straight to the hospital. Abby was also escorted to the hospital by police. Brad was taken straight into surgery and he was in surgery for a very long time. Doctors did everything that they could to save Brad. However, there was nothing that they could do. But his injury was just too severe. Abby had stabbed Brad through the chest, through his ribs, but then the knife had pierced his heart. And at half past one in the morning, five hours after he'd been stabbed, Bradley Lewis was sadly pronounced dead, which is just so heartbreaking. Like, how did it end like this? Brad has four young children that now don't have a dad because of Abby. And at this point, Abby was arrested straight away, but she still was carrying on her lie that Brad had done this to himself, that she didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, they argued, but that is all she's guilty of. However, her story kept changing. Her first story was that Brad got the knife from the kitchen and then stabbed himself. But then the second story was that they were arguing and Abby went to get the knife. And then Brad wrestled the knife off of Abby and then stabbed himself. And then the story was that Abby got the knife and then Brad got Abby's hand, who was holding the knife, and then stabbed himself using Abby's hand. None of it was making any sense. However, the police did question the three-year-old son. And this is when the three-year-old son said, quote, Mommy stabbed daddy. So Abby was arrested and charged with murder and she was held in custody to await trial. And then we get to October of 2022, seven months after the murder of Bradley. And this is when Abby goes to trial, but she's already changing her story once again. Abby is now finally admitting that she did stab Brad. However, she didn't mean to harm him. She didn't mean to stab him in the heart. She didn't want to murder him. So Abby wanted the lesser charge of manslaughter 
manslaughter instead of murder. But the prosecution were like, mm -mm, no, 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 you stabbed him in the chest. That is enough for the intent to murder. So during the trial, the prosecution put forward all of the evidence of the volatile, violent relationship between the two of them, but Abby's violent past, the fact that she has stabbed Brad twice before the murder. They also played that very damning voice note. I fully believe that I'm quite capable of killing him. I have to beat the f living daylights out of him. He only tells me the truth when he thinks I'm gonna f kill him. Like when I get a knife out, when I f stab him. And Abby, on a number of occasions, spoke to friends about killing Brad. And she did try to act like she was remorseful, but I don't think she was. I think she was only remorseful that she got caught. And did she intend to murder Brad? I don't know. I tend to think that if you stab someone in the chest, you intend to kill them. And in the end, the jury agreed. The jury agreed that this was 100% intentional, that it was murder, not manslaughter. So Abigail White was found guilty of murder and she was sentenced to life in prison and she has to serve a minimum of 18 years. And also whilst in prison, Abby has continued on having new stories written about her because, and I just couldn't believe this when I read this, Abby is demanding that she should be allowed to have sex with a load of men whilst she is still in prison. And I'm like, wow. And that was the case of Abigail White, which was just horrific and so needless. And I just really feel sorry for Brad's children. He has four children. They are so young. They now have to grow up without their dad. Three of his children also now have to grow up without their mom. And I just hope that all of the children are okay. And I just want to end this video remembering the victim of today's case. Bradley Lewis was described as an amazing, caring and kind hearty person. He loved football, playing for his local team, was incredibly liked by everyone at his club and he was also described as a doting dad of four who would do anything and everything for his children and his whole family and everyone that knew Brad misses him greatly. He was taken far far too soon. He was only 22 years old and I think that that is something that is really easy to forget about this case that he was so young. He was only 22 and that brings us to the end of today's case. As always, let me know your thoughts, theories, and opinions. And don't forget to leave me your case suggestions in the comments down below because I always want to know what you want to hear next. Thank you again to Love and Pies for sponsoring today's video. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.